Howdy, Bug Hall here. Uh, you may remember me from such videos as Bug Hall finally breaks his silence on. It was a long title. His arrest, Hollywood child abuse, <laughs> the Roman Catholic Church. Nine months, and, and I, I, I flubbed the first, first bit of this. Uh, <laughs> it's taken me nine months to make this video because I wanted to be able to articulate it as well as I was able to articulate my last one. When I first started poking around at all the contradictions in my life, uh, I didn't expect that the answer was going to be walking away from a 30-year career, one that was very lucrative financially and, um, and one that, that I thought was very fulfilling. I think those two attachments were, were the blind spot, um, but uh, thanks be to God and His grace, I was able to punch through that, that hole there and, and see the truth on the other side. So in that video, I mentioned that I was going to go off, well, I'll go off and I don't know, buy a farm somewhere and disappear. Well, I did buy a farm. I didn't disappear. Uh, I, I've decided to add a detail to this, this new adventure. Uh, and that is that we're, we're going to embrace a life of poverty. And in today's society, that sounds crazy. Poverty is something to be eradicated, uh, to be gotten rid of. It's a disease. But I think that's because we're the wealthiest society in the history of, of man. Um, we're the most comfortable by a long shot. Now, the average person today lives far more comfortably than uh, most kings throughout history. Uh, and we really abhor poverty. And I think we're missing something important. I think it's a big part of all the problems that we have. And you know what they are as well as I do. And maybe we all disagree on what those problems are. But, but we know that there's problems. And I think it's because we are so comfortable. And we don't want to lose that. I think that's a, deep down, that's all of our biggest fear is is to lose comfort, to lose uh, our pleasures. When I was looking at other career options, I started off thinking, you know, what what could possibly be more fulfilling than than storytelling? Um, and I should find something that has a high uh, high yield and as low an input as possible, so I can spend time with my kids and something with a, a great potential for growth, career growth. But the more I thought about that concept, the abstract idea of career, it started to lose its meaning for me. Uh, nobody had careers through most of history. People just survived. They just provided for their families. And they had livelihoods, right? And maybe they specialized in something. But for the most part, the idea of a career didn't really exist. Uh, and I, I don't know that we've progressed in the best direction here. I think that being really connected to the needs of our family, the immediate needs, uh, staying kind of rooted where we are is far more beneficial to our souls, our psychology. I think that's a I think it's a great loss. I think you can look at suicide rates and look at uh, depression medication and all these all these metrics that that point towards a, a really deep deep problem. So, why poverty specifically? Well, poverty does two things. It's there's sort of these twin sisters within poverty. Uh, there's the self protection meaning protection from self, uh, the, the insulation from our desires, our appetites, our attachments, it, it, uh, it frees us from that. I think that's why poverty has always been such a, 
a core concept. It's always been at the at the heart of, of Holy Mother Church. Because the monastics and the missionaries, the parish priests, the bishops, they needed to be able to speak truthfully without their own desires getting in the way, their own desire for worldly gain. And then the, the other side of that coin is the fear of repercussion. Right? When you have nothing or nearly nothing, then there is nothing or nearly nothing for anyone to take from you. So it's really the ultimate freedom. It's it, especially in our, our really complex society. Uh, along with the comforts comes a multitude of layers of complexity to our society that I think for a lot of people are difficult to navigate. Um, and I don't, I don't, I don't know why we, why we have to. I think there's a, another way. Um, and look, that's what the saints did, right? So you can point to all these golden, golden eras in, in, in church history. Um, but there were always these dichotomies, these false dichotomies presented in, in all ages. Um, these paradigms that the saints shattered. Um, I think if I was trying to define the exteriors of the saints, uh, some common denominator, that's what it is. They are the, they are the great smashers of paradigms. Um, they, they always found a third way. Uh, and I think, I think it's on us. Certainly no one's coming for us. We're not going to suddenly get great leaders ex nihilo. We're, we're not going to suddenly get great presidents or kings or bishops or priests uh, that just spring up from nothing. Uh, as, much as, our, as much as hierarchy is a fundamental reality, it grows from the bottom up. It grows from the individual and the family and the community. Um, and that's, that's something that poverty does great. We, we are a disconnected society. I'm talking to you through this, <laughs> this magical device that I have a boomer level understand, understanding of. Um, but I don't know any of you, and I will probably never have a relationship with any of you. Um, I do hope to make more of these videos and to have a back and forth uh, and for this to be kind of a dialogue of sorts, but we don't have very many real relationships. And I think that's because real relationships require all the integral parts of friendship, right? The necessity is, is so greatly missing. Uh, we're all... An, and this applies to the entire first world and probably the second world and, and more and more so the third world. We're all locked in this idea of that sort of Americanist, rugged individualism. And we have the means to live on our own terms. We have the means to, to do as we so please uh, and to only invite the other in when it's pleasurable when it facilitates uh, our enjoyment. Poverty is the great unifier. Poverty, poverty creates community. I'm not gonna make it here on my own. I, I am already reliant on the generosity and the, the love, the real genuine love of, of the people around me uh, in a way that uh, I've never I've never experienced, uh, and it's it's so humbling and it's so beautiful to to have these people that just just love us. And I think I think we all need to get back to that on a certain level. And maybe that doesn't mean a vow of poverty for you, um, but we need to need each other. And I think the the higher we go in in our wealth and in our poverty. Our, so our wealth and in our uh, our comforts, uh, the further we get away from that need, um, and it creates relatability. Um, having to be humbled and reach out my, at my hand is something I've never had to do before. But doing that 
makes me want to grab the hands of, of so many other people when, when they reach out. And I never did that either. Um, I wasn't, you know, I was the guy that might show up when you're moving and help you load up your truck. But, um, but when push came to shove, I wasn't out there looking for people, even in my immediate sphere that needed a, uh, a helping hand. Um, and that's just how Catholics lived for the entire history of the church up until very recently. Someone reached out to me uh, recently about a, a sponsorship deal. They wanted to offer me some money in exchange for promoting their Catholic jewelry company, um, which is normal. That's a normal thing in our society. Advertisement is money, and it's a whole, it's a whole system. And I almost said yes, and then it, it hit me. I don't want to live like that. I don't want to, uh, to live in this quid pro quo uh, legalistic sort of way. Um, so I'm going to put the link to that company in here. And uh, if you're a Catholic company, I want to know about you. Reach out to me. Um, I would love to see what you're offering people, see how, uh, how your faith is expressed in your, in your work and in your craft. And, and I want to just, just shoot it out to the masses. Let's just support each other. Um, we got to find a new way of doing things. We have to really find a new way of doing things. Uh, and ultimately, that's going to be re a representation of the Holy Cross in our faith. That's what's been removed. That's what's that's what's been been watered down in almost every aspect of church teaching. Um, and that's the adventure. Our faith used to be this great adventure. It was the, it was the great adventure. It was presented that way, right? The saints, I, I don't remember which one it was, they were reading about this saint that was sneaking out his window in the middle of the night and his mom caught him and said, where are you going? He said, I'm running away to a monastery. I'm, I'm, I'm stripping off everything and, and running to win the race to heaven. Goodbye, mother. Uh, you know, I'm not telling anyone to go do that, but uh, man, what a beautiful call to adventure. We're such a boring, adventureless society. Uh, but the cross is, is our great adventure, and our Lord misses us. He just wants us there with him in that long walk. And we refuse it. We refuse it because we just want to be comfortable. That's really it. And that this might upset some people to, to, for me to say, but um, I realized at a, at a certain point that our Lord never stopped calling me. He never stopped reaching out and saying, I'm I'm just I'm waiting here. I'm I've been carrying this cross and I'm I'm lonely. I just want you, right? I just want we have such a great opportunity to comfort him and to be there and to carry that cross, the real cross, not the little ones that we we think make up our our daily uh, mild discomfort. But to dig down into the depths of our soul and to, to bring about great heroic virtue. Um, so that's what me and my family are doing. And we might fail miserably. We might be a, ca a cautionary tale. But we will have at least worked out our own salvation through fear and trembling. We will have, we will have grown in love of our Lord um, in the most intimate way. And I caution, I caution all of you to, to think that, uh, that's, that's as easily or as efficaciously done through your pleasures. I know there's the story of the saint eating the cake and, and they said, if you were a saint, you wouldn't eat that cake. And she said, well, I'm offering it up. Sure. But, for every one of those stories, there are a near infinite uh, number of stories from the saints who knew 
or at least acted as though um, the greatest unity that we can have with our Lord is through that that cross. Um, so, so we're going to live uh, a kind of monastic life here. And we're going to build a community, hopefully, and uh, we're taking the name the Hall Barnett of the Holy Cross because we want to live that authentically. We just want to live authentically and, and to, to pray much and to suffer well. So I'm excited to, to go on this journey with you and to share it with you as we go and I'll be releasing homestead videos, I think, occasionally, and um, videos uh, on my general thoughts of, uh, my general thoughts and how they relate to, to me and my own experiences. I'm, I'm not going to get into all the, all the worldly, <clears throat> worldly things, but um, I'm excited. My wife's excited. My children are excited. Um, it's a beautiful life that we're aiming for. I hope, I hope we hit it. So, Viva Cristo Rey. Hey, so this is that Catholic jewelry company I was telling you about. They're called Choose Life Rosaries. I've known about them for a long time because we've bought a lot of their stuff and we really love their rosaries. My wife loves their teethers. Um, and we know them to be very, very, very good Catholics over there. And, and that's the goal here is just, just to support our fellow Catholics in their endeavors because that's what we should be doing, um, not because of any uh, material gain or financial gain. So if you're a Catholic company and you think that I would be a good avenue for promotion, just reach out to me. Uh, I just want to promote you just because. So that's how I'm doing things from now on, and I hope that more people will follow.